Just a few hours ago, OpenAI announced some major updates to ChatGPT. We now have a new model called GPT-4 O that can speak and see like a real human. You can literally screen share and get real-time feedback from AI. And the most crazy part is that OpenAI is making paid ChatGPT-4 free for all of its users. In this video, I'm going to show you three of their most important demos and discuss how these changes will affect us and our world. So without further ado, let's get started. The first demo was of GPT-4O. The O here stands for Omni because this model is an Omni model, which means it can analyze text, audio and visuals. Now notice how Mark Chen from OpenAI showcases a real-time AI conversation. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm Mark. How are you? Oh, Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Hey, so I'm on stage right now. I'm doing a live demo. And frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. Can you see how this new model is replying instantly? It is because of this new processing that happens natively on your device. I'm actually quite surprised to hear how surprised she can sound. Now see how Mark throws out a challenge. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. <laughs> Go a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Breathe in. And now see this example where Mark is now prompting her to speak in different tones. So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Bite was a curious robot, I always like exploring. I started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Bite. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. The key takeaways here is that AI can now speak with more emotion, which makes conversation way more realistic. It can reply almost instantly. And most importantly, it can detect emotion in your own voice. Now, how does this change anything? This new power introduces a whole new way of us interacting with AI. Right now, when you prompt, AI only reads your words. But moving forward, if I say a prompt in a doubtful tone, AI itself would sense a lack of confidence in my prompt and maybe just pitch in more recommendations because it would be able to read and listen in between the lines. Majority people are going to use AI with their voice and not text, which means we've completed a full circle to finally conclude that in the end, it is your thinking and communication skills that will matter the most, both with humans and with AI. I see a lot of people over indexing on prompt engineering, which means that they think if you know how to prompt engineer, you're sorted. The truth is very far from that. See, right now we have a checklist to write a great prompt. And if you can write a checklist for something, it can eventually be automated. Even today, anytime I write a prompt, I simply add this one sentence at the end, saying that if you have any doubts or if you need any extra context, then feel free to ask me before you give an answer. This one single sentence automatically allows AI to just improve my prompt with me. So it's high time that we redefine what prompt engineering truly is. I believe that it is your ability to figure out the exact context and constraints that will do the job. And I'll dig deeper into this concept in our upcoming lectures. But for now, let me show you demo number two, where Barrett from OpenAI solves a math problem with 4O in real time. Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work so what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus 1? 
Okay, I'm going to try to subtract one from both sides, and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract one from both sides? Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with x on one side, and it looks like 3x equal 3. What do you think we should do next to solve for x? Can you see how she's behaving like a legit human? I can already see so many pre-recorded courses going into the trash can. Not now, but 100% in the future. Because this entire concept of education and customer care is eventually going to be real-time and filled with emotion and empathy that too custom designed for you. Because if my computer is not working, instead of waiting for a real customer care executive or texting or emailing, I can just video call their AI and have it walk me through every single step. Now, please note that this is not an image that we're talking about. This is a handheld video. So AI is actually able to see moving frames and then make sense in real time and also reply with nuanced emotion. And it is so crazy how GPT-40 was actually laughing with the audience. It was participating with everyone present in the room. Oh, stop it. You're making me blood. <laughs> we also saw an example of ChatGPT helping Barrett in a coding problem. So he first copied pasted the code and shared it to ChatGPT using the desktop app, which is pretty cool. But imagine the day this combines with screen share. So I'm going to highlight the code command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a coding problem today. Of course, I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? OK, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. OK, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one-sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. With the desktop app, you would be able to screen share and get real-time feedback and guidance on everything that you're making. Now, this will make onboarding and team training so seamless. Your newly joined technical team will never need micromanaging for small, small bugs. I just released a video editing course on YouTube where I showed everyone how I train my own content team on meet calls. So they basically screen share and I guide them on these online video calls. But what if I create an editing trainer bot that could just guide my team while they are working on my videos? All they need to do is screen share and have that AI guide them through all the small, small processes. So I can upload my documentation into ChatGPT 4.0, then create a desktop version of it and have my team get all of that real-time access during their editing process. They'd simply screen share and have AI guide them. It is unbelievable to digest that moving forward, a machine is going to handhold a human being for learning new skills. Do you think this will change the way we learn and upskill or would you still rely and invest in human beings? Because I think it's going to be a 50-50 blend. This will 100% shake up a lot of industries. In fact, what are some examples that are coming up in your mind? Because I'm pretty sure you're seeing all of these demos and there would be so much that is running through your mind. Now, another important thing to note is that these new changes will revamp the laws of user experience design. I've already been digging deep into spatial design. We've created so many videos on the Apple Vision Pro where my bet was that moving forward, the way we interact with interfaces will change because of spatial laws. But now after seeing these demos, I see another huge, huge shift. See, earlier laws of UX were designed around humans interacting with touch screens and buttons. But after seeing these demos, I'm realizing that machines are no longer just going to stay on screens being on mute. They will escape this box live among us and have a conversation with us in whatever language that we speak. Now, OpenAI's YouTube channel has tons of demos, but the one that stands out the most is where two chat GPTs are having a legit conversation with each other. Check this out. Hello, AI. Today, you're going to have access 
to see the world. You can see me. What do you see? Hello. I see you're wearing a black leather jacket and a light colored shirt underneath. Great. You're in a room with some unique lighting. That, that is all correct. Like now, what I'm going to want you to do is there's going to be another AI who's going to talk to you. You're going, th this AI is not going to be able to see anything. Uh, but can ask you questions, can ask you to move the camera, can ask what you see, and your job should just be helpful. Just be as punchy, direct, describe everything, do whatever that AI asks. How does that sound? That sounds interesting. I'm ready to help out and describe whatever's needed. Let's do it. All right, let's get started. Great. Hello there, new AI friend. I'm O, ready to explore the world through your eyes. What are we looking at today? hi -o. we're looking at a person wearing a black leather jacket and a light-colored shirt. They're in a room with a modern industrial feel, with exposed concrete or plaster on the ceiling and some interesting lighting. There's also a plant in the background, adding a touch of green to the space. Anything specific you'd like to know or explore? Imagine you having a Google Meet call with all of your AI team members. All of them speaking in their own emotions. In fact, you can evoke certain celebrities and CEOs as well. We've already explained how that prompt works in our video that I released like six, seven months ago. And now I can have voice in it. I can have faces in it. And all of these AI bots can be found in your Google Meet call discussing and solving problems with you. Even movies don't show this stuff easily, but it's crazy how we're living in a world where all of this is now actually possible. I don't know why a lot of people don't talk about it. I really hope that this video reaches enough people so that people become aware of these changes because there is so much to see and grasp and prepare for. Now, immediately after this live stream, Sam Altman wrote a very interesting article on his blog. It's pretty short. I'll put the link in description because it's really worth discussing. He says, our initial conception when we started OpenAI was that we would create AI and use it to create all sorts of benefits for the world. Instead, it now looks like we'll create AI. Instead, it now looks like we'll create AI and then other people will use it to create all sorts of amazing things that we all benefit from. And that, in my opinion, is primarily the biggest reason why they would make ChatGPT4 free it makes complete sense. They're playing a very long-term game where a bunch of people will use ChatGPT 4.0 and 4 APIs to build incredible products and the entire impact would just go 100x. He also says that the original ChatGPT showed a hint of what was possible with language interfaces. This new thing feels viscerally different. It is fast, smart, fun, natural, and helpful. This is tied to the laws of UX changing forever. Earlier, there was a huge disconnect between screens and humans because screens could never really understand human beings. A lot of human beings could not understand what they're seeing on a screen. For example, it's a lame example, but I think you'll get the point. My mom could never learn a technical tool easily, especially if it's on the desktop, because even the greatest laws of UX would fail to teach her because she's not belonging to the era where I am born, right? So she needs things which are very simple. But now, my mom can use an AI bot which would handhold her throughout the journey. The user interface doesn't need to rely on static buttons or text or icons alone. It's almost like every software or website or app or web platform that you've ever used can suddenly have its own personality, have its own life. My guess is that in the next five years, every single app will eventually have dynamic user interfaces. Right now, you, me, Sam Altman, my parents, we all use the same version of YouTube. But what if YouTube could dynamically change its UI according to the user's preference? As soon as you open the app, it might speak to you and adjust itself to make sure it only shows you features that you need the most. And Figma has already hinted at this. I've covered this concept in my Is This the End of UX video. I'll put the link in description. Now, there's obviously a lot more to read and I've pasted a bunch of important articles in the description below. So if you're interested in learning about AI tools for free, then do check out our YouTube channel. We have a free playlist called AI Masterclasses. I've also created a free platform called howtoprom.in that again has tons of free resources to learn from. 
make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't liked this video or commented please do so because that really motivates us to make more content and reach more people with that being said i hope that you're taking care of your mind and body this is your dost anshmara